sponsored by Phoenix Hall. Jan is a bout of amateur MMA held in the super middleweight division. It will be ball for the three three minute rounds and it's for the cage steel amateur super middleweight title. He becomes the first in the blue corner. This fighter he is 39 years of age. He weighed in at 87.4 kilograms. He hails from Nottingham and fights out of ABT with a record of six wins. This is one draw in the blue corner. Dan Tepe! This fighter is 20 years of age. He weighed in at 88.2 kilograms. He hails from Spinball and fights out of the Lodge MMA. He is the reigning cage steel light heavyweight champion. The record six wins, one loss, one draw. In the red corner, Jack Hobby. When the action begins, your referee in charge is Mr. Neil Hall. We've got Tempest in the blue corner in the dark trunks. Combi in the red corner, in the green trunks, and looking to become the champ champ here tonight is Combi, light heavyweight champion, looking for the super middleweight title as well. Dan has picked up a couple of uh, regional titles around uh, different fight shows as well, but this would be his, his biggest opportunity, his, um, his most illustrious one. Combi coming out, throwing hard. Dan tucks the head and swings back. Reach for the head, though. He's going to get an easy takedown there for Combi by reaching over the top like that. Big oh. slam, and a right hand follows it. Looked like the slam itself stunned him for a minute there. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as Combi moves down through the weights, I think you'll see his power. Big shots coming in there on the ground of Tempest. He might have walked himself into a guillotine. If he can get his back against the cage, now with the arm in there, it'll be a little bit more difficult for him to finish. Yeah, Tempest has worked his way out of that. Looks for a single leg of his own, but good work. Uchimata attempts. Nice underhook defense there for Kongi. Head position, perfect against the cage. Yeah, good head position, tight underhook there, chipping away. Knees, little punches. A strong position on the fence for Combi. Dan holding his wizard there, keeping Combi up just in case he tries to drop for the hips. But with his right hand, he's trying to punch him in the face. Could try and make a pause to create some space to try and turn off there. I would go with that. I like your idea better than his of just trying to throw shots back. He's conceded that underhook. And now he has a wizard, but see how his elbow's pointing up? That wizard's not very strong right now. In fact, right now, positional-wise, oh, Combi having his head right there under the chin. Man, he could just stay there all day, beat the body, beat the head, throw knees if he wants to the legs. And really, honestly, the minute he wants the takedown, it's going to be fairly easy for him to go ahead and just change levels, connect his hands on the other side of that knee. Yeah, you know... He's getting some velocity behind those left hands from that position. Strong head position and, you know, heavy, uh, strong feet there. Wow, that's textbook stuff there from Combi. I mean, that's exactly if you're in that position with the underhook, a guy shoved against the cage, head position like you're a unicorn, driving in, leaves that far shoulder free to go and throw punches. And when he wants to, he can just change levels and put his hand behind the knee that's supporting up Tempest. And that way he can get the takedown if he wants to. But... Really, here he's scoring points and utilizing very little energy. He's structurally sound. That means like a skeletal system. He's, he's holding weight with his legs straight. That's easy. See, and with the, the deep underhook, that means, you know, Tempest Wizard is going on his shoulder girdle, you know, as opposed to pressuring down the arm, which is why he's able to hold his position and keep landing the left hand. Ten second clap has gone, and Combi's accumulated quite a lot of damage and a lot of time in control in round one. And a final flurry, Dan throws back, eats a couple on the bell. Smiles and goes back to his corner. But a real strong round there for Jack Combi. And not only, those are great rounds when you win them, and you didn't really expend as much energy as your opponent to win them. So now you're walking back in, and, and conditioning is an important factor, but it's important also to use technique to be able to extend your conditioning farther. Right now, Combi, if they both started out at 100%, now Tempest is down at 70 and Combi's only at 90. 
Yeah, and uh, it has to be said as well, Jack, he's had fights at heavyweight, won the light heavyweight title. He's coming down to super middleweight now. He's getting leaner as he goes. You know, I'm sure his gas tank's improving. But, yeah, you know, looking all the better for it. And it's very rare we see him slow down anyway, but, you know, as he drops through the weight, looks like he's, you know, carrying that little bit less can, uh, can make that gas tank maybe go a little bit further. But certainly no quitting Dan Tempest, so we'll see what round two brings. Again, he, you can see how he just... He almost reached for the head, but he grabbed the wizard, and he's pretty much just deja vu, stuck in the same exact position he was in the first round with really no answer. What he needs to do is his right hand has to get on the other side of the head closest to him and create a frame, post off, or dig an underhook and switch hips, put his right hip forward by keeping the same hook forward that he has the underhook or the overhook there. He's not creating any space and he's just trapped against the cage and really at the mercy of Combi and what he wants to do. Yeah, and Combi's head position there, right there on the jaw is, uh, you know, makes it hard for Dan to get any sort of frame with the right arm or to, you know, make the head disengage. So Jack really, you know, in a strong position here and doesn't look like he's going to be budged. No, the only thing I would add to Combi is if I would put my left hand on the top of Tempta's head and just draw him to the mat. Yeah. He looks uh, very content to continue using this sort of, you know, dirty boxing position, in tight, grinding the head into the jaw, chipping away with the left hand. Dan oh. went for the throw. Well, why not? You know, if you find a position in your opponent, I mean, it's happened to me before in fights when I, you, you do an offensive maneuver, you have a position, and you find that your opponent really doesn't have an answer for it. Well. Rinse and repeat is my method of thought process. Well, I don't have to change what I'm doing. I'm winning by doing this over and over again. The onus is on you to figure out a way to defend it to stop me. Absolutely. And, you know, especially if you're in a position where you're controlling, landing damage in a position where your opponent is unable to land any offense of his own. You know, that is pretty much the ideal scenario in a fight. Absolutely. He's not going to be caught with a submission from here he's not going to get any wild shots to knock him out dan tempest doesn't have any distance to create power to be able to throw anything vicious and really i mean he could make the fight more exciting by trying to advance his position jack colby could but you know there's a title on the line and here it's like just keep doing what you're doing and a brief oh. break some big shots for colby that was a tempest great goes down. cut and now he's actually put himself almost in a crucifix position. If Jack Comey can get his foot behind his other knee, he'll be in a great position to just unleash a lot of damage. Yeah, and I think Tempest is just trying to regain his composure here a little bit, shake off those cobwebs. It was a good shot he took and great reaction to go ahead and just clinch it down. 10 seconds left, pull, pulls like a reverse mount. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that happen before. Foot marks. Briefly gets on top. But another very strong round for Jack Combi, and I think a minute in that corner that might be well needed for Tempest. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's had a tough three minutes there as Dan pretty much forced to the fence in the opening seconds. He's been pinned there, you know, just eating the left hands and then, you know, right there, you know, last 30 seconds gets dropped on the break. You know, that's uh, an extremely strong round for Combi and it's gonna be something special for Tempest to try and pull this back in the third. Well, he needs to have an answer. Either A, find a way through footwork and positioning to not end up there, or B, find a way to get out of there once he is trapped against the cage. And so far, I mean, being there for six minutes, he hasn't showed either one. I mean, there are times where, as a cornerman, you can remind your fighter of just something, hey, look, frame, or let's use our feet to move left and right laterally to get off of the cage. Hopefully those are things, but I mean, honestly, it's very difficult because you didn't do them when you were fresh. 
and now you're six minutes into a tough fight, your brain isn't working as well because the lack of oxygen, your fatigue, your decision-making skills are not as good. Oh, oh a big right hand from Combe, and that's Wobble Tempest again. Goes for the throw, but Combe is strong underhook and evades it. That is a nice Uchimata that he has. He's, just, he's not holding the other side of the body to be able to throw Jack Combe completely to his back. So he uses it as a, a, a way to disrupt the underhook, but he's not capitalizing anything from that uh, disruption. He's creating movement, but just not increasing his position. Yeah, and in a fight where after six minutes there's been very little windows of opportunity, once you make those happen, it's like Dan really has to make the most of them now, especially with... You know, two and a half minutes left. Yeah, and again, he's just not. Look at his right hand. He keeps fighting the left arm of Combe, which he has distance to pull his arm back, throw those shots. It's really a, a losing battle to play that game of hand versus hand with your losing head position. Even if he does take shots, I tell people, look, forget that you're getting hit a few times. Concede that. Improve the position of the head. Get a frame in there. That right arm needs to come in between the head of Combi and push off. Yeah, and uh, you know, amateur rule set here, obviously, no elbows and no knees to the head. You know, I look forward to, you know, from this performance tonight, what Combi could do you know, with those tools at his disposal as well, where he's forcing Dan over at the waist, you know, knees and elbows from that position. I'm sure that'll be good to see, but again, chipping away, drops his underhook to round the waist, good head control. And just, you know, forcing the pace, landing his left hand. And Dan with everything to do at this point. When Dan raises his, uh, his left leg there, you know, if it, without the left leg on the, on the mat, it's very hard for him to try and whip his left hip to try and create space and then get that right frame. And he's kind of holding himself in the position. Absolutely. He's, he's kind of like, he's got his... The finger stuck in the uh, the dam. He's, he's slowing down the leak, but he's not stopping the flood. What he needs to do is put both feet down so that he can start moving laterally side to side. By having one foot up in the air, he's stagnant. He can't move laterally anymore. And then he's not even creating a frame. So really, Jack Comey is just going to keep on doing the same position. Head control, beat him up. He's in no danger of taking a bad shot again. This is an easy fight for him just to sail on and win the round and win the complete thing. Yeah, and that's the last 10 second clapper. A quick break off from Combi, and he's gonna try and throw down one last time. Dan obliges and swings back. Gets his head rocked back a couple of times. And a thrilling last 10, but it was all Combi throughout the three rounds. Entertaining way for us to finish it. Dan showed he's still in it and willing to fight all the way. But it looks like Combi's going to cruise to his second championship here at K Steel. That was very impressive, Combi, to go ahead and choose that. I mean, that was an opening for them for Tempters to go ahead and turn around. And, and look, hindsight would have been 20 20 if you got rocked with a shot and lose the fight after dominating it for almost every second of, uh, of the first, th you know, those three rounds. But it shows the game chip on his part to go ahead and, and, and try to do that. Yeah. Your winner, and the new Hey Steel Super Middleweight Champion, the champ champ, Jack Combe! And ladies and gentlemen, please, a huge, huge round of applause for our outstanding opponent, Jack Yeah. Great fight, great game plan, and well applied there from Combi.